So in this video, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about this pen. It's called the Kickerland 4-in-1 Tool Pen. Uh, there's a few good different companies that make tool pens. I think the most famous is from Monteverdi. Uh, there's also a Troika. And then there's this one, which is uh, from uh, Kickerland or Kickerland, or I don't even know how you say it. But I'm pretty sure this is an in-house brand from Costco or Sam's Club or something like that. And they're typically known for, you know, like... Uh, paper goods, but I think that same company also makes all sorts of other stuff, including this four-in-one tool pen. I bought this one not from a Costco. I bought this one from Amazon for about four dollars. So the uh, other tool pens cost like you know five, six times that. So I was inspecting a whole lot from this one, but I've been playing with it for a little bit. And I wanted to discuss it. So uh, what's going on with this pen? It is a ballpoint pen. It is a twist retractable. It might look like you push here or you twist here, but no, it's down here. And it has a fully plastic body with plastic knurling. So as you probably would expect, uh, it's uh, quite light. So and when you pick it up, you kind of are not really shocked. Like, oh, I get it. That's a, a $4 pen. So, uh, you know, <laughs> the clip is metal. So that's nice. And some of the hardware is metal. Uh, but... It is a very lightweight pen, and it, you won't be shocked at why the pen costs $4 when you get your hands on it. So let's get into the tools really quickly. Uh, it's a four-in-one. I'm not exactly sure how they count it, but you have an inch ruler here, a centimeter ruler here. Does that count as two or is that one? I'm not really sure. You have a bubble level here, right, right there. You could probably see it. So now we're up to, I would say, three, technically. And if you remove this cap piece here, we see that there is a flat headed screwdriver. So is that four? And now you have a Phillips headed screwdriver. So is that five? So maybe the ruler is one and the screwdriver counts twice uh, or something like that. It's kind of hard to say, but uh, that is pretty much the tool selection. The ruler markings are printed on. So Anytime you have something that's printed on plastic, it's not going to be that tough because the plastic, you know, it's just kind of like paint on there. That's going to wear out over time. Here you have the centimeter ruler, same deal. It's even a big seam in the middle, but, you know, it's fine for now. The centimeter and the inch, inch, sorry, the centimeter and the inch, they don't line up exactly at start, so have to be careful there. You get 7 cm out of this one and 3 inches. The inches, uh, you get your, uh, you know, I guess that's your eighth instead of your sixteenth. So I don't know how exact you have to be, but there you go. Certainly not going to measure down to the 32nd or even the 64th with your Kickerland pen. Bubble level, it's in there. It works. It's quite small, so you have to be looking at it quite exactly. It's closed in the back. Typically... Uh, you see most bubble levels will be open in the back. So you can look at it from two different sides, but also to allow some light to get in there. Uh, this one, unless you're looking straight down at it in a well-lit area, you could see it just, it looks kind of dark. So does it do the job? Yeah, but it is uh, not super effective. You can see right here, can you make out that bubble? Yeah, my table is pretty flat. That's nice. But without some uh, some backlighting or some extra lighting, it's pretty hard to make out. Screwdrivers here, you have a small Phillips, like a, I don't know, PH1 or something like that. And then a small flat blade. These are held in with a magnet, which is nice. That means it doesn't want to fall out, which is good. Slightly magnetized makes it easier to pick up screws and all. But I will say that you are using a metal bit in a plastic housing, which frequently ends in heartbreak because if you're really trying to torque this and you're trying to use this pen, then uh, there's a good chance that you're going to break the housing eventually. So it's really only for small jobs. Like if you have to open up your, I don't know, your computer mouse or something like that, this is fine. But don't put a crescent wrench around this thing <laughs> because, you know, it is hex shaped and try to torque it. You will break the pen. I have no, no doubts about that. Fully plastic cap and this screws on keep this uh, the bit 
covered. Metal clip works fairly well. No problems with the clip. I do feel like it's going to rip out of the, uh, the housing at some point. You can see mine is starting to be somewhat raised. And I've been honestly pretty careful with it. But uh, it's only a matter of time until the, with this little clip, it just sprung steel. It's usually put inside and then kind of bent over. Uh, this one looks like it's just going to rip out sooner or later. This is the plastic knurling. It looks actually pretty nice. If this was aluminum, it would be uh, pretty cool. It has a nice, smooth action. kind of feels much nicer than it actually is. There's some... Uh, this looks like it's screw-shaped, and I think that is so... I haven't actually tried this yet, but this is probably so you could screw that on. Yeah, so that's nice. I uh, hadn't done that. I just figured the cap I threw in my pocket, but there you go. And yeah, if you're not careful, this front piece will come undone, and you can see... Uh, I forget how this goes. Anyway, let's get at that refill first. Get the cap back in place. And then the refill, I was just, yeah, this piece, it's uh, it's pressure. It's like a, not press fit, but it's on there just uh, with some pressure. This thing uh, is, you know, just slides in here and holds in place. And so if you, you don't have to unscrew it to get it out, you could actually just pull it. And now we have the front apparatus. This is technically the pen action. You can see this metal housing here. And there's the knurling goes back and forth to extend the refill. And this is like very typical of an older pen from the 70s and 80s. You'd see an apparatus like this. This is a plastic piece. It threads. And essentially what you have here, this is just a standard D1 style refill. But using this piece right here, this presses on the top. And now uh, this black piece enables the D1 refill to slide up and down. And then this goes there. And as far as the writing goes, uh, <laughs> it's actually not a bad D1 refill at all. I've had much, much more expensive pens, which with much worse ballpoint refills, including especially, I would say, much worse D1 refills. So it's actually a nice, smooth, kind of like, you know, almost like a big quality refill. I have no problems with how this pen writes at all. So this is the... It's K-I-K-K-E-R-L-A-N-D. And I think it just called the, the tool pen. I don't know what you would pay at a Costco or something like that, but on Amazon it was about $4, maybe $4.95, something like that. But there you go. Nice black ballpoint refill. Writes on just about anything, and it'll probably last you a very long time, or at least as long as a D1 refill goes. As for the pen itself, uh, it's totally fine. You know, for $4, it writes, it has your tools. You want to be careful that you don't torque the screwdriver. I don't have a lot of faith in these markings on the rulers sticking around, but you know, for the, I don't know, six or eight weeks or whatever, I've been using this one, haven't had any problems with it. Pretty nice refill, no problems there. And then you could change your refill if and when your D1 wears out. Shouldn't be any problems there getting an alternate D1 in there. Haven't lost any pieces yet. The bit is in there quite securely which is nice, doesn't want to come out. It is magnetized. The bit itself, uh, you know, it's fine. It's kind of like the quality of a uh, no-name screwdriver that you would get at, you know, the uh, at the counter of a hardware store or something like that. Or, you know, if you want to buy a screwdriver in the grocery store, like something like that, you know, totally fine to do the job. Uh, not exactly a professional tool. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> you'd say for, for the money, it's actually not bad. But if you want something that resembles a real tool and feels like a real tool, you're going to have to upgrade to the Monteverdi or the Troika or some of the other tool pens. I'm going to be looking at them in the coming weeks. So it's one of the most requested products on the, uh, on the channel. So there you go. Thanks for watching.